and welcome to Past Conversations. Delighted today to be back for 2021 and even more delighted today to be joined by Ian Sanders. Ian is the founder of Cold War Conversations, a podcast that so far has recorded over 155 episodes and about 9,000 minutes of audio so far. The, the purpose and the aim of the podcast is to try and collect as many voices and memories and stories of the Cold War as possible. I'm going to pass over to you now and he can say hello. Well, Paul, thank you very much for uh, inviting me on to uh, past conversations. I stumbled across you uh, probably about a month and a half ago and really in enjoyed the content. I mean, you know, you and I, we're both lovers of history, but I really like the approach that you've um, got there and you've you've had some great guests. I'm, I'm humbled that uh, I've made the cut. Ian, just to, to get us started, the, the same question I ask absolutely everyone who comes on to the, to the show to speak to me, and that's, what are your memories of studying history at school? Um, not, not great, to uh, be honest, but with hindsight, I did have a good teacher. I just didn't enjoy the uh, syllabus, especially. Um, the, the syllabus was social and economic history, and I really wanted to do political and and military history. My views have changed now though. I, I enjoy both areas um, equally and um, particularly do, doing the podcast. You know, I, I avoid just being purely military stories. I'm really interested in the civilian experience as well. Um, I had intended to go to university to uh, study history and politics at Warwick, uh, but I didn't get good enough grades. So I entered the thrilling world selling menswear in a department store um, but this didn't dampen my uh, passion for history because I've, I've always been a lifelong learner and have built my knowledge independently mainly from uh, reading as you can see from my uh, small collection behind me. Ian absolutely no pretending or hiding from the fact that you are uh, something of a Cold War obsessive, if you'll forgive me for, for calling you that. Um, but I'm, I'm sort of curious to know why that particular time period? What is it that, that really interests you? Yeah, I'd probably call myself a Cold War enthusiast rather than obsessive, but uh, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that. Um, the, the reason that the Cold War is that it, it dominated my formative years. Um, you know, a period when the Soviet Union looked like it was going to be there forever. The geopolitical landscape was set in stone. And then the momentous changes of 1989 came in my mid-20s. And I looked at the TV and thought, I'm actually experiencing one of those pivotal moments of world history. Um, and that... You know, I've always been interested in history, but because I lived through that period, that that brought it alive for me. But it, it was also a period where you can still talk to people who directly experience the Cold War. So, you know, with World War Two, I was aware that many oral histories were not recorded and I wanted to make sure the same didn't happen with the Cold War. Um, and also, I was drawn by the impact of hearing somebody's story in their own voice rather than reading it from a page. Um, as, as you'll know, listening to a podcast is a very intimate experience. You're hearing every word, every hesitation and breath. And I really think that medium brings the story to life. One of the things that I'm hugely impressed with, I think, is the, the amount of people that, that so far you've, you've been able to have these conversations with. Um, I mean, just glancing over here, I've got a list. We've got, you know, the, the, the son of Soviet Premier uh, Nikita Khrushchev, former submariners, the daughter of a Romanian dissident, former diplomats, academics, former generals, um, and a whole host of other people, I'm sure, in amongst that as well. And, and I just sort of wonder, you know, to put you on the spot slightly here, are, are there any stories that, for whatever reason, stand out perhaps just 
a bit more than others? Um, there are. It, it's, it is difficult to choose, to be, to be honest, because every story has its own uniqueness. But um, Sergei Khrushchev was a really interesting interview. I mean, and he was a great break early on because... I could go to guests and say, you know what, I've interviewed the son of Nikita Khrushchev, the Soviet premier at the time of the Cuban Missile Crisis. Um, and it gave you some, you know, some, some credibility there. Now, he was in his 20s when the Cuban Missile Crisis happened, and he was close to his father. So it was amazing to, to speak to somebody who was at some potentially world-ending decisions around how his father was going to deal with the Cuban Missile Crisis. And listening to that was incredibly um, sobering as well. I mean, sadly, he's not with us anymore. But again, that is one of the reasons why I capture these stories, because people aren't around forever, and hearing it in their own voices is unique. Now, whilst it's great to have some of the big name guests, I'm always drawn to the unknown or the, or the little known voices. And to give you a few examples, um, I came across an East German army officer who lived 20 miles from me. And it was so strange sitting at his kitchen table, sipping coffee and talking through his, his experiences. It was something I'd never expected when, when I started the podcast. That's episode uh, 39, 45, and 53, if people are interested. Um, I also interviewed a US military policeman who was at Checkpoint Charlie when the wall opened, episode 13. A 23-year-old nuclear missile commander. Can you imagine that? 23 years old and you're in charge of three Pershing tactical nuclear missiles. That's episode 122. Um, but away from the military side, I interviewed uh, a guy called Mark Reeder, who is a musician and music producer. He's been involved in the Berlin and international music scene since the 1970s. And through contacts in East Germany, he um, put on several punk gigs behind the Iron Curtain. And he describes his Stasi file as being as thick as a phone book. Um, but it was a really interesting story of somebody crisscrossing backwards and forwards across the Berlin Wall and working with, with people in East Germany. That was quite an early episode, episode 12. But then again, I never thought I'd be speaking to spies. In episode 140 and 141, I spoke with a KGB spy who was a deep cover agent in the US. So if you've ever watched the series, The Americans, um, you'll know what, what that's about. And that was incredible hearing about how he, he married somebody in the US, couldn't tell her, couldn't tell anybody else. And those psychological pressures where you're trying to live a, a double life. And, some of the interviews are unexpectedly moving. I think one of the most powerful ones I did was uh, an episode called A Childhood Under the Eye of the Secret Police, which is episode 147. And this was an interview with somebody who was 12 when her father was arrested for protesting against the Romanian regime of Nicolae Ceausescu. And it's an incredibly powerful story of the impact of her father's actions on her family and the ramifications of that. Um, and sometimes it surprises me because that's not one of the most listened to episodes, but it's definitely one of my favorites. And I do recommend a, a listen to that. But there's also how I come across these guests. And often it's somebody saying, oh, you should speak to them or, or stuff like that. But sometimes it's serendipity. So this Saturday's episode is a good example of that where I'm interviewing a, a guy called Charlie who fought in the 1956 Hungarian uprising. Now I've been after somebody who'd, who'd been involved in the Hungarian uprising for literally a, a number of years. And I found him by chance just doing the usual scrolling through Twitter. And there was a random tweet from his daughter saying, my father's having his last beer before lockdown 
and 64 years ago, he was given a machine gun and asked to storm Budapest radio station. So I immediately knew what she was talking about, got on and, you know, started messaging her and had a lovely chat with both him and her. And she learned so much more about his story that, that she'd never learned in, you know, years of, of him being her, her father. So it's been an amazing journey and, and so enjoyable and, you know, a real privilege to hear these stories. And I just love sharing them with people. And I'm finding that teachers are now using them for, you know, Cold War studies. I've got an invite to speak at Leeds University as a guest speaker to uh, some students who are studying communism in, in Eastern Europe. It's, it, it's been phenomenal. And I'm sure you're finding this with past conversations that you're, you know, you're getting to talk to people that ordinarily you'd have no right to talk to, but you know, you do, and it, it enriches, well, certainly enriches me when I watch your videos, but you know, enriches you as well. Ian, just finally, before we have to finish our conversation, just, just curious, you know, you're someone who, as I said, is utterly immersed in, in Cold War history, but I'm curious if you had any, you know, tips, advice, suggestions for, for anyone who might be watching or listening, and they themselves are, have a period in history that they might be interested in, and they're wanting to, you know, find out more about it. What would, what would you suggest to them? Um, well, I mean, back in the past, I would have said read, and I think that's still good advice. I mean, that's how I really self-taught myself in, in, in my history. As I said before, you know, I, I was taught social and economic history, but political and military history is certainly self-taught. And the absolute bulk of that is through uh, reading. Um, but now there's so many means and ways of, of discovering history. And naturally, as you would expect, I would say podcasts is a great route um, and there's a number of great podcasts out there around some really obscure areas of history. Well, areas that I was de describe as obscure anyway. Um, but for podcasts that provide a good general introduction into subjects, there's one that I really enjoy and I've been on there as well. Um, but there's one called History Hack. And I don't know whether you've come across that, but I'd really recommend that a very varied list of subjects. It's very accessible and it's covered by uh, two great presenters. So I'd recommend that as sort of like a gateway broad history uh, podcast. As far as um, documentaries and areas like that, BBC iPlayer is always a good source of uh, history documentaries. It's worth scrolling beyond the ones that immediately come up, it's worth having a fish around in their index because there's some quite obscure uh, ones in there that I found around Cold War that don't necessarily feature on the, the main menu page. Um, but I am wary of some of the history channels that are on some of the cable networks. I mean, it just beggars belief that people are still putting out content around Hitler escaping at the end of World War Two and, and, and stuff like that. So you need to be wary about what you're looking at, I think, particularly with cable and, and, and satellite TV. But BBC's um, a safe bet. And as I said before, History Hack, I very much enjoy, alongside past conversations, obviously. <laughs> 